Hey everyone, so in this video, we'll be learning a few things. First one would be valuations. So what valuation can I give to this particular company? And at what valuation if I buy, it is a decent buy. Because no matter how good a company is, if you buy it at crazy valuations, probably for the next few years, you might not make any money at all. Or else it can even dip from that level. Although it is fundamentally good, everything is great, but it can still correct because of the high valuations, right? So first one, we'll look at valuations. Second, we'll look at standalone and consolidated results. What is the difference and which one should we consider in our this thing? And also many a times companies have other income. So how to be careful when analyzing companies which are having other income? And the last one is enterprise value. What exactly is enterprise value and how do we look at enterprise value and then take a call, right? So first, let's start with the valuation thing that is uh, the PEG ratio. So Peter Lynch, he kind of coined this term PEG ratio. So what exactly is PEG ratio? So when you divide the P of the current stock by the growth rate that the company has been seeing, that is growth rate in the profit. All right. So you get the peg ratio. And what he said was, it's okay up till one peg ratio, right? So that is P divided by growth is equal to one. So up to that level, it makes sense to buy. But if it crosses that, then it becomes a little overvalued. Something like eight is like out of the box, right? So it is extremely high no matter how good the management and all the tailwind, all that uh, things, right? So those do not matter. If you buy a big bubble, the minute it bursts, it is going to come back to reasonable valuations, right? So first one is something like transformers and rectifiers. If you look at the company in the last um, a few years, it has done okay. There is no real growth in earnings like December 22 was 14 crores, December 23, 16 crores, right? But in between you had a loss quarter as well, right? So very haphazard kind of numbers. And also the TTM, if you look at it, TTM is trailing 12 months. If you look at that, that is kind of degrowing from the previous year, right? So a company that has been degrowing, its net profits have fallen from 42 crores to 15 crores right so something like that does not make sense at all to give it as high as an eps as 400 right no matter what the tailwind is to be honest it is it has started degrowing de right so if I, it was continuously growing that is the sales were continuously moving higher then it would have made sense but in such stocks right it does not make sense at all to give them high p so many of the new retail investors are now into small micro caps right so there if the peg ratio of your company whichever you are investing in has a ratio above one then usually it is the valuations are higher than the growth right so if it is lower than that then it is considered to be good but there has to be growth it is not like there is no growth and the peg ratio is less i'll buy such company so when i say growth minimum of 15 20 percent kind of a net profit growth the company should be having in the last let's say one to two years so if that is the case still if the peg ratio is below one it makes sense to buy them right so that is on the valuation because a lot of you are now investing in micro caps and all of that so this is one if you look at something like cupid so cupid is currently trading at 133 p right so the peg ratio here is 10 it, it's like crazy valuations you don't give such uh, peg ratios for something that has not been growing at all right so this is also one more so these are like extremely high valued valuation companies that are there in the market as of now right? better to avoid these companies especially now that we are let's say almost at the fag end of this bull run and the bubble can burst anytime right so these are few companies based on the valuations you would want to stay away from them right so next comes standalone numbers and your uh, consolidated figures so let's look at tata motors Right, so everyone is aware about Tata Motors. So Tata Motors, if you scroll down, you will see the 
usually you would see the standalone results of that particular company so standalone results means something that the company is selling under its own brand name that is tata commercial vehicles are there like that is your uh, trucks and stuff right and you have passenger cars tata nexon all of that right so those directly which is it is selling under the tata name right those would come under the standalone number so then if you look at the standalone number and say okay in the last one year it has done close to around uh, 70 crores right and then you would look at the market cap and say okay 70 crores it has done and then the market cap is somewhere around 35,000 I mean 350,000 almost five times it might be too much so in such cases because we know that Tata Motors owns Jaguar Land Rover right and the size of JLR is almost five times of the, that of Tata Motors in terms of sales I'm talking about. So in such companies which have subsidiaries right or they own another companies in such companies what you will do you will always look at the consolidated results okay. So if the company owns some other company, it makes sense to look at its consolidated figures. So if you take out that 18 crores out of this, then almost 92 crores came in from JLR. Correct. So in such cases, you would want to look at the consolidated figures of such companies. Now, if you look at this and say 110 crores, it is doing every single year. So if you will take the last four quarters also more than four lakh crores of sales the company is doing and then you compare the sales you will be like okay this is not really trading at such crazy valuations right so the market cap is somewhere close to that right so the, although there are other valuation metrics that we use but in this case uh, when you compare the market cap to sales which a lot of people do so in that case it is always better to look at the consolidated figures especially in companies which have subsidiaries or own other companies as well okay so this is about the standalone and consolidated figures now coming to one more thing that is other income so many smaller companies sometimes when they sell their assets what happens in the profit and loss statement you have a huge other income figure all right so this other income thing that is there right although screener now what it has done is it is ignoring the other income and calculating the eps so in companies where the other income is huge, let's say there was a small company, it sold off its land and because of which they got like crazy money. In such cases, what will happen? The other income will come here because of which the net profit goes through the roof. Your EPS also becomes very high. People start looking at that and then say, okay, this is trading at extremely cheap valuations because the EPS is so high. So what I would suggest is whenever you are analyzing any company, make sure that there was no one time other income thing that is kind of boosting its uh, uh, net profits right if that is the case then don't fall prey to that particular trap because many times the operators kind of use that to push the uh, stocks to crazy valuations and then kind of distribute it right so that is also one more thing and the last one that i wanted to talk about was enterprise value so many people especially in uh, high debt companies right so this is something that you would want to take care of enterprise value so or else even in other companies whenever you are buying a particular company instead of looking at the market cap right look at the enterprise value right so what is enterprise value enterprise value kind of takes into account the market cap plus the debt that is there on the books right so if i want to own delhi build con tomorrow then i would not have to pay just 6681 crores i would have to pay full 13000 crores to buy this particular company because once i buy it even the debt becomes mine right so now if you look at the sales of this cup particular company like i've seen a lot of analysts doing this mistake of looking at the sales and then the market cap and saying okay this is kind of lower than the uh, sales that the company is doing right especially in high debt companies so in high debt companies you always have to take into account the enterprise value and then come to a conclusion for example in this the 
if you take into account sales close to 11500 crores and then take the market cap you'll feel like okay this company is trading at a market cap which is half of the sales that it is doing but when you look at the enterprise value you'll be like okay actually it is trading at a fair valuation compared to the uh, sales that the company has been doing right if you look at the enterprise value so in such cases or else in all the companies like for example if you look at gnfc there the enterprise value is actually lower than the market price market cap of the company so how is this possible so if the company is cash rich there is no debt on top of that if the company is having like 250 or 2500 crores of cash then those companies if I let's say I have to buy Gujarat Narmada Valley Fertilizers and Chemicals tomorrow, then I would only be shelling out 6,576 crores to buy the whole company. So this is actually a good thing for an investor if the company is cash rich, right? So this is how enterprise value will kind of help you to identify whether the sales to market cap is at a current, uh, uh, I mean, is it not too much or too low right so this is what will help most of you in taking a proper decision hope these four points help thank you